welcome to skill header, this is the most demanding and must watch video. You already know that MS Access is a powerful database programming platform but there are some restrictions. We are going to learn all aspects of using SQL Server as a backend for MS Access frontend applications. First of all, you should know the top three reasons why SQL Server is required for MS Access database. Access has limited scalability and performance. The most painful slow down the data read and write in Access is the limitation of user interaction at one time. Access database file limit is 2 gigabytes. There is a method in Access called table split which can be used to link the Access frontend with the split tables from the local network but it is not recommended due to the limitations described here. Please click on the I button above for the access split method and how to use it. On the other hand, there are three major advantages of using SQL Server as a backend with access. It gives strong processing and scalable data and can handle large data along with complex projects. It has faster data storing and retrieval capabilities. the process and the requirement described in this video. Hence, we are going to use multiple computers. All computers must be using the same local network like the same router or the LAN. For better speed, reliability, and performance, you can install the SQL Server on a dedicated computer. We are going to learn how to enable SQL port 1433 in Windows Firewall. We will use SQL Server Configuration Manager to configure TCP IP. We will establish the ODBC connection on the client's computer and finally configure it with the Access Database. This video is the fifth release of the series of Access Online and Local Connectivity. Please click on the I button above to view the list or check the link in the description. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get an update notification for upcoming exciting videos, like, share, and comment. Let's get started. First, I will start my SQL Server Management Studio from a dedicated server computer PC, 1. If you want to learn how to install SQL Server in SQL Server Management Studio on Windows, please click the link above or in the description. After filling in the login and password credentials, we will make a new database and a table. The test table will contain these fields. Add demo data to the table. Please note the SQL Server name. Move on to the second PC which will be a client computer. If we want to use a dedicated computer for SQL Server, we can manage the SQL Server from any computer within the local network.
As you can see, the SQL Server cannot be managed from the client's computer right now. To make it possible we have to enable the SQL port from the server computer's firewall and TCP IP connection. To do this, go to the Windows Firewall with Advanced Security where you have to define both inbound and outbound rules to enable SQL port for the network. After the firewall rules are defined, you have to configure the SQL Server. Here you can see the SQL Server services are already running. Under the SQL Server network configuration, Click on the protocols for SQL Server. After enabling the TCP IP, click on the IP addresses tab. You need to define TCP port as 1433 for all IP addresses within the network. This warning message tells you that the changes have been saved but will not take effect until you restart the SQL Server services. You can restart the services by right-clicking on the SQL Server services from this section. Now, you have to create an ODBC connection on the client computer. To do so, click Add and select the SQL Server Native Client 11.0 from the driver list. You can give any name, and as you remember the SQL Server name, fill in the name properly here. This database list shows that the connection has successfully been established. Select the database that we have created from the SQL Server computer. Moreover, you can test the connection as well. Good so far, now to link the tables with the access, you need to use the external data source as ODBC database. We will always link the tables to the SQL Server so data can be stored or retrieved from the server computer. Now, select the ODBC connection that we have created. After the successful login, you will see all the tables available on the server. You can select multiple tables at once as well. That is great, we have successfully established the SQL Server table integration with the MS Access frontend and as you can see the data is also available which was stored from the SQL Server. Now, let's add some data to see if appears on the SQL Server computer.
Now, if we want to manage the SQL Server from any computer other than the server computer, it should be possible by giving the SQL Server name and credentials. Please remember that you also have to install the SQL Server Management Studio on the computer from which you want to manage SQL Server. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get an update notification for upcoming exciting videos, like, share, and comment.